So what I'm going to do with and on um, one one last time we represented it as an AR infinity and we came up with the pi values. Here I'm going to convert it to an MA infinity and I am going to compute the psi values. The, these are what we call the pi weights and the psi weights. So the way I defined the R model. Professor, yes. What we did you this would is basically you're looking almost exactly the same as the last one, but with epsilon rather than one, epsilon t rather than yt. Yes. Okay. We're just solving for yt. So y t one plus phi one b equals epsilon t <coughs> plus theta one epsilon t b if I pull that out epsilon t out I'll have one plus theta one b Last time I divided both sides by theta of b. This time I'm going to divide by b of b. This divides, that's why I started with this notation when I did that introduction of R not the cube. So y t would be epsilon t theta of b over phi of b. Good. So I'll have one plus theta one b divided by one plus b one b. Yes, I'm just rewriting it in such a way I could use the geometric series like I did in the previous case. We have to rewrite this once again because the infinite sum of a geometric series is one over one minus a if a is the common ratio so that would end up being one minus a one b plus Minus P one B squared. Minus P one B cubed. Minus P one B raised to. Minus B one B base five, and then we keep on going. Yes. Now, D 
this should be, but before we do that, let's rewrite that for convenience. I'm just applying the power so that I get the plus and the minus signs. So I don't have to deal with them later when I distribute. Now I'm going to distribute like I did in the previous case. First, multiply by one. One multiply by everything. Now I'm going to take theta one and I'm going to multiply by everything. So theta one b minus theta one v one b squared. Sorry, plus. Yes, never mind. Plus. The theta one p one p p one squared b cubed minus theta one p one cubed times b raised four. The next one theta one p one raised four b raised five. Correct. Combine the terms one theta one minus B one. Over here, V one squared. Minus theta one p one multiplied by the square theta one p one square minus p one cubed theta cubed p one raised four theta raised four minus theta one p one cubed. Uh, not beta to B. I keep saying beta, which is not tricky. And theta one, P one raised four minus P one raised five times B raised five. I can kind of see as to why, because you know we're talking about theta P one and then start. Uppercase B stands for beta distribution, so my mind keeps going to that. And it's fine, you get it. <clears throat> yes? And we know a moving average infinity process. Is that correct? Oh, I can easily write side values on the side weights. Side weight, of course, is one. Psi one 
there's theta one minus v one. The side two, there's v one squared minus theta one v one. Yes. If I have all negative v one out, I would simply have theta one minus v one. Which is the same as saying minus p one times psi one. But then psi three is theta one p one squared minus p one cubed. P1 squared, if I pull it out, I would have theta 1 minus P1. But what is uh, P1, uh, excuse me, theta 1 minus P1? Psi 1. Say P1 squared times Psi 1. Psi 4. P1 raised 4 minus theta 1 P1 cubed. Correct. If I combine those two by pull negative P1 cubed out, I'll have theta 1 minus P1. And that would equal to negative P1 cubed side 1. We should recognize the pattern way now, yes? So in general, I can write psi k to be equal to minus 1 or minus p1 raised k minus 1 multiplied by psi 1, yes? One way of writing it. What is the other way if we want to use the previous side values? In other words, I want to use side two. Um, so side two is minus p one side one. Side three, I can write it as minus p one times minus p one theta 1 minus p1, yes? Which would simply be minus p1 psi 2. Correct. And the next um, I have minus p1 q theta 1 minus p1 and look back over here so minus p1 p1 squared times theta 1 minus p1 once again we'll have minus p1 and what is that and that simply is psi 3 correct so what is the general form for psi k as a recursion, psi k plus one would be equal to minus p one multiplied by psi k. Good. K has to be greater than or equal to two. Good. Um, so you can see a path of looking this and what we did previously. Once again, 
if I have absolutely summable uh, coefficients, these would convert. And if you go back and look at the phi one values, we required phi one for an AR one to be between negative one and one. So this will definitely converge as k gets bigger and bigger, right? The decimal value keep on raising the power higher and higher, that will go to zero. So it should be absolutely solvable. Good.